Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Robert Malherb. Hi, Richard. How are you? It's been a long time. It's lovely to see you again. Um, and uh, your exhibition is The Human Landscape at Michael Reed, Sydney. Um, and let's just dive straight in. Let's dive straight into the thing that, well, you always seem to dive into almost literally, which is the paint. Uh, so start us off by, by just giving us a little bit of a, of a sense of, of that relationship with paint. What is it that drives you to do what you do with it? Um, well, the beautiful thing about oil paint, I mean, it's, it's a very sticky, it's, it's coloured mud, really, you know, when you think about it. And, um, but the thing that it does beautifully, and the reason why it was invented, was to trap light. You know, prior to that, they had different other mediums, different, um, you know, paints that seemed very flat and chalky, uh, didn't really sort of capture the, uh, the effect of light on the human flesh. And so when oil painting was invented, like, all of a sudden you can trap light, but you can also trap experiences and feelings and emotions. And it's, it's, it's a quite sensitive, it looks brutal, but it's a very sensitive medium. And so um, the way I go about painting a picture, I mean, this, this is the question. Um, I don't draw before I, I paint. I, I go straight in with a paint, a loaded brush, and I, I move the paint about. And, uh, and then it's just a, a matter of um, desperately trying to capture down as quickly as possible what I have in front of me and, and what the feelings are. I, I've been fortunate enough to, um, uh, to have the chance to see you painting from time to time over the years. And it's a process packed with enormous focus and energy. And as you say, you, you do try to do the work as quickly as possible. Why is that? I, I, think, inter I think thinking too much interferes with the work and then you begin to uh, you become more hesitant, um, you begin to doubt too much. And for me, the, the whole reason why I paint directly from life um, is to get these, I respond to these things. So uh, I'll respond to the light, I'll respond to the, the, the space, the depth. Um, and so you, you sort of like, it's, it, it, is, it is a kind of like a very desperate thing where you're trying to put all these things down before you question it or think about it. And I've often, you know, found, found myself like measuring or, you know, measuring tone or, or sort of trying to get things correct. And for me, the best way to go about it is to be as in, uh, intuitive as possible. And, uh, and so, so how do you find that balance between that, that emotion, as you say, that you're trying uh, to capture in that intense and quick application of the paint and the precise observation that you sometimes need to make in in figures, in foreshortening, in, in the structure of landscapes? How do, you, how do you find that balance? Well, it's really just drawing with paint. That's really what it is. I mean, um, I think the reason I don't draw prior to putting down the paint is because it would bore me. Um, and I think it's, I tend to, because I, you know, I was never really taught how to paint. And um, I mean, everyone teaches themselves how to paint. That's how, how it works. But it seems to be that I, <laughs> I, I tend to do it the other way where I put lots of color down first and then I'll put the lines over the top. <laughs> so, you know, to correct things and push things about. I mean, the whole thing is, is a kind of a, a wrestling match where you, I mean, it's a, you know, you're really working with a really just a flat surface really. And, and with that, you're creating not only depth, but um, a sense of weight uh, and also feelings and, and, and you're putting all these things on this flat surface. And, the interesting thing about, I mean, I know the subject of style might come up, you know, with the, with the use of thick paint and stuff, but what style really is, is um, the way you try to convince people of what it is that you're seeing and feeling, and that's style. And it's sometimes not a deliberate thing, and sometimes it's just an accidental thing. And I think the faster you work, the more, the better chance you have of putting something down. You know, it's like, you know, saying, I haven't prepared any of this today. I'm just, it's just coming out of my mouth. And that's really what painting is. You know, you're just saying these things and you don't want to think about it too much or else you'll stumble. Well, you mentioned that it was a, a wrestling match. So let's go and step into the ring um, and, uh, and have a look at uh, some of the specific works in this exhibition. Let's, um, let's start off. I mean, it's called the human landscape, uh, but let's, let's step into the, the broader landscape first with one uh, particular work. Let's start with Street Landscape 3. 
Um, and, and we can see here, when you were saying that wrestling match with paint, there's tremendous vigorous use of paint going on here. The, uh, give us a sense of where you were and how that was happening. Well, this, um, during lockdown, what really happened was that, you know, I couldn't go very far. I usually tend to go down the South Coast. But in reality, lockdown hasn't really changed my life that much, Richard, because I, I do tend to paint, you know, within walking distance. As you know, I don't drive a car. You know, I don't, you know, I've never driven a car in my life. There are painters who don't drive. Um, so I would go for long walks, you know, with the easel and, um, and set up. And, and look, you can transform anything into a, a, a beautiful image. And um, this is just up the street. And I, I've been living here in the mountains for 20 years. And you, you get to see the same street over and over again in different light, different conditions, different seasons. And I kind of know just on the beginning of autumn, around about that time, um, the light is so beautiful in the afternoons. The shadows are very long. And uh, the sunlight kisses the top of the trees, you know, just before five o'clock. And that's the sort of thing I was trying to get there. I mean, it's, look, the thing is, it's not, it's not a photograph. It is being manipulated, it is being pushed around, it is deformed, it is, it is transformed. Um, there's a great quote from David Hockney where he said, um, the, moment, um, the moment you cheat to make a picture work, to make it beautiful, that's when you're an artist. And uh, I really like that. I mean, I, it's, and it's very true because you, you find that you, you almost have to exaggerate to tell the truth or what the truth is to you. Yeah, but also that's, that's the truth that, that you are seeing in that, uh, in that landscape. And that's presumably the truth that, that you're trying to, to share. You were saying that uh, you're in the mountains, uh, but uh, this is the Blue Mountains, west of Sydney. Um, give us a sense of going out into that local landscape that you walk into, as you were saying, what do you walk with? What do you take with you when you go painting the landscape? Well, I, I look like a madman, really, because I've got a, an old shopping trolley and uh, <laughs> an easel, and I've got my painting gear on, and I've got a hat on, and I look quite very different to the way I look right now. And I look quite <laughs> mad. And people, uh, people tend to leave you alone, and which is nice. And, um, and you sort of sit up and paint. And uh, you know, a lot of the times you get, you know, especially up here in the mountains, people are, because I've been doing it for so long, they're sort of used to seeing me. And, I, you know, it's like, that, oh, that, that guy, you know. So, so it's pretty good, you know. Uh, but, yes, I, I mean, I love this area. I wouldn't live anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Maybe Paris. <laughs> <laughs> just, just if someone offered, offered you the option. <laughs> That's right. Let's go to that uh, other form of human landscape in this exhibition, uh, the, the landscape of the human figure. Um, and let's go to... Um, one uh, very small work to begin with uh, called Small Back of Nude. And this is a very small painting. Yeah. But give us a sense, even with something this small, of how you compose and then begin to work with the model. Um, the thing to, uh, that I try to do is that I, I suggest very, uh, well, I, I don't suggest that much to a model what I would like uh, the model to do. Um, usually they would say to me, look, are we doing a standing, sitting or lying down? And I'll just uh, try not to look until I'm ready to paint because I want to be surprised. I want to be taken by surprise. And I will say, look, just a lying down one and I'll be mixing my paints and getting things ready. And then I will look over and, and there it is. There's the pose. And that shock of seeing that image, you know. Um, and so what you're trying to do is just capture that. And, and you, and, Sometimes you feel like when you're looking at the back uh, of, of the human body and the sheets and the bed and the pillows and so forth, there's a feeling that like you're almost like a, uh, I mean, a low flying aircraft, you know, going over some sort of landscape, some sort of terrain. And um, to give a sense of that, you know, uh, and you want to do that as, um, as honestly and, um, well, it's beautiful isn't it, at the same time, you know, the human body's always been beautiful and it's always been painted. You know, I mean, painting is like over 30,000 years old and, some of the first things we ever painted was, you know, ourselves. It almost, it almost seemed with, uh, with that work as though there's a single incredibly strong slash of white along the back. You know, you mentioned the back and travelling almost like a, an aircraft over a landscape. Um, can you sometimes build a painting around a single strong paint mark? 
Well, no, I'll tell you what. Well, look, the thing is, you're first attracted by, it's a good question, you're attracted by movement when you first see something. There's a kind of overall movement. And it's the same with still lives, landscapes, the figure, a portrait. Um, when, when, if I was to paint you right now, I would see the movement in your face and I would start with that. But we, in this particular um, painting, what I often find happens, um, a lot of the times, Richard, the paintings aren't going very well at all. You know, they, they, they actually feel, they, they actually feel illustrational. They feel um, flat, they feel, they don't feel alive. There's something, it's just not right. And, and you know, you're always like stamping your feet and swearing and, and carrying on. And, uh, <laughs> but something always seems to happen towards the end. You know, you do a couple of things and the picture is saved and the picture comes together and the picture begins to sing. And the very last thing I did on that painting was that swipe across the back there. And it seemed to um, echo some of the shapes and some of the forms. And um, it just made the whole thing work. Yeah. Let's move to reclining figure two. Um, because one of the things that you often seem to do is employ quite complex foreshortening and, and perspective, perspectival views of the figure. Uh, how do you manage to combine that with painting so quickly? Because you do need to see it right, don't you? Yeah, uh, well, it's years and years of drawing, you know. I mean, the thing is, it's just, um, it really comes down to drawing. You, if you can draw, you can paint. If you can't draw, well, you can push colour and, and lines around and, and try and make, uh, you know, worthy effort of it. But I think drawing is everything. And, and if you can see things in terms of form and shape, um, Color, color, the use of color and line is, uh, you know, just it's, it's just, you know, it becomes a lot easier, I think. But yeah, I mean, the battle really begins with drawing. I mean, and the more you draw, this is the beautiful thing. The more you draw, the more you see. I mean, drawing isn't just having something that you can show to people and say, look, look what I've done. It's not really that. It's when you're drawing someone or something, you're really, really looking. And, um, and the more you draw, the more you see, and the more you see, the better painter you are. Let's go out into the landscape again now to that uh, street landscape and this is street landscape two and one of the reasons that I, I wanted to, to, to have a look at that one and for you to, to talk about it is that once again a little bit like that incredibly strong white mark on the the back of the figure that we talked about a while ago there are these really uncompromising paint horizontals in this uh, in this painting along the road can you talk us through those decisions a little? Look, our picture is made up of a lot of pushes and pulls and, uh, you know, you have the, you know, the verticals and you have the horizontals and you have the diagonals and, and you know, you have round shapes and you've got, um, you know, you've got distant shapes, you've got close shapes. And, and, and these are the things that you're constantly, you know, playing with like, a, like an orchestra and, and you're pushing things around. Um, and in the end, it sort of settles into a sort of composition that you think works. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, the thing is like, and th 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 these lines that were put down, they were put down basically in one mm. swap. Well, because that's how they look. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, no they, they, have they that, are. They have that real sort of strength of movement and, and, and the, uh, you were talking about emotion before. It is like a, an emotional gesture within a physical landscape. Yeah, I, th I think it, it works to pack as much into one stroke as you possibly can. Um, not just paint wise, but feeling wise. And I think uh, I'm not the first person. In fact, I'm probably taking this from Francis Bacon. I think Francis Bacon said you should put as much emotion into every brush stroke, you know, which is a beautiful thing, you know, and it's true when you think about it. Um, you don't, there's nothing certainly mechanical in, in that painting. There's no, I mean, even the, the post, the telegraph post were done in just one movement. And then with a the lighter part on top of the post, I would just put a little dab of a lighter tone on top. But um, these are done not, uh, not in a very careful way, Richard. <laughs> They're done in a very sort of, um, it's, got to, it's just got to sing. It's just got to come together, you know, in, in one. And, and the other thing I, I don't think we've discussed is that all the paintings are done in one session. There's no that, add, that, add on. That's, that, that's the kind of a la prima approach that you're very uncompromising about. Yeah, I think it all sits together. Technically, it's the best way to paint because, you know, the, all the all the colors sit on one, they're all one skin, one skin of paint. So technically that's, nothing's gonna crack or fall apart. Um, 
but also for me, I, I feel like I really wanted to be one skin. I really wanted to be one, one session, one statement, one, um, yeah, just one go. You know. mm -hmm. It's a lovely phrase, one skin, and it actually takes us straight into the next painting that I wanted uh, to look at, um, which is uh, figure four. And the reason that I wanted to look at that was the skin. It, ah. literally, it literally looks as though the skin of this figure is paint. It's like a skin of paint over the whole body rather than a mark or a gesture. Again, talk us through what was happening. Well, it's the same thing again. I mean, you, um, you, you start with a blob of, uh, of paint and it's usually a mid-tone that you might think because then you can work into the dark and then work into the, the light. And... Um, I think what was happening in there, I mean, there aren't many shadows, there's very um, strong shadow maybe near the elbow onto the cloth, but the rest of it is um, this in, uh, intense light across the form. And um, th how many tones are there? Probably about three or four different tones, but um, I did begin with more tones and um, then I sort of simplified it. And I don't know, look, it's, it's a mystery how these things work, how, how, how color can trap feelings and emotions. I mean, you know, it, it, again, we're looking at coloured mud and yet we're convinced we're looking at skin and cloth. <laughs> yes. It's, um, a, it's a beautiful mystery. It, it is a beautiful mystery. Uh, I was just also interested, uh, just going back a, a little bit, you were mentioning uh, Bacon and well, one or two other influences you mentioned, Hockney, uh, a little earlier too. But I know that you've had an enduring uh, love and admiration for Soutine's work. Um, for a very long time. What, what, what is that passionate relationship that you have with Soutine? Well, um, well the, the thing about Soutine is that um, he was just so un uncompromising, wasn't he? I mean, and he was so... Um, I've seen paintings, and this is the beautiful thing, I've seen paintings painted by Soutine of one particular site, and he had a friend called Kremenge stand next to him and paint a picture the same site. And when you look at the two paintings, side by side, what Soutin did compared to what someone who's not, not a bad painter, but not a great painter did, does, um, is, is incredible, you know. So Soutin's um, ability to um, create movement, complex movement, complex uh, space, um, uh, the emotional quality of his work, I mean, and his use of red, you know, it's, it's, look, the other thing I wanted to say is that we as human beings, we see psychologically. And so we, um, the way we look at the world and how we change that and transform it into painting, it reveals a great deal about ourselves. We can't hide in painting. There's nowhere to go. You can see everything you, about the person in the painting. Um, you can't even fake it, you know what I mean? Because if you're faking it, you can, you can see it in the painting the person's faking it, you know? Mm. Um, so with Soutin, you really, and this is the other thing with the people that I'm influenced by, I feel very close to these paintings. I feel, I look at the work and I feel like I, uh, uh, they're in the room with me, you know. Um, and also th there's another phrase that I really love and, and which is very true of painting. When one looks at a painting, one is actually repainting the whole image, but with your eyes. So, so, uh, so when you're looking at a, a Soutin, the excitement, the feelings that you get, the charge. Um, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure, mm. even in great, reproduction. A, a, great, a great pleasure and, and obviously uh, um, a, a wonderfully positive influence on your thinking over uh, the years, along with others as well. Um, and that European sensibility, I guess, is partly what I wanted to go to next uh, with our next image, Lake Four, um, because I think there is a sense, well, I, I guess I should ask you, is there a sense of a, of a kind of European sensibility to the landscapes that you choose to paint and, and the way in which you paint them? Um, yeah, I think the influences, are, all my influences are there in the paintings. Um, as I said, you can't really hide. And um, so if you're going to have influences, they better be really good ones. <laughs> you know, and one of the huge influences for me, you know, uh, is someone, well, you've got Coho, you know, the French painter Corot, and then you've also got Constable as well, the English painter Constable, uh, and the way these um, two painters created um, light and space, and they painted directly on site as well. Um, 
it's been a huge influence. I mean, and, uh, you know, I don't even, I mean, people say things like, oh, are you an impressionist? Are you a post-impressionist? Are you a realist? Are you this? Are you that? Are you an expressionist? You know, the thing is, um, I don't know what I am. You know, I just look at these, I just go to these places and um, something will take my fancy and something will um, strike me as being, well, beautiful. And um, you kind of like have this, it's, it's more than an urge. You just feel like if you don't, do something with this, then you're not really doing anything with your life. You know, you feel like, um, I mean, for me, when I see something and the first thing I want to do is either draw or paint it, the way I suppose if you hear music and your body starts to move, mm. um, to dance. So for me, it's the same thing on a, um, on a visual level. Mm. Walking around that um, lake, um, uh, you, you see the, the reflection and the light and the clouds and everything. Um, I don't know, there might be a metaphor there, I'm not sure, but it's just, to me, it just struck me as being beautiful. Let's go to a final work, uh, and that is um, maybe even ironically uh, called Untitled, um, uh, this, uh, this particular work where it really seems, I think especially that the, the body, the figure in this work is, is approached really sculpturally. Um, and there is a real sense of the awareness of anatomy and the shift of the shoulders and the and the shift of the, the pelvic structure. Um, how much do you see anatomy when you are seeing the person that you're painting? Um, do I think in terms of anatomy? No, I think in terms of um, it's personality coming out through the skin. I think in terms of um, you know, um, we all know that um, you could watch somebody walk down the street and by their walk, you can somehow get an idea of what the person is like. And basically, it's a kind of a portrait. It is a portrait of that person through the body, you know. And um, so I think that's basically it. You know, it's like, there it is. There's, there's this person. And the, the model who's, who sat for this painting, she says that is so her, that, you know, her mother would know who, who that was straight away um so yeah i mean also um, yeah i mean there are beautiful things in there like creases and folds in skin you know the um the light on the neck and the the, the rosiness of the, the cheeks and stuff that these all these things make you um remind you that this is a a human a, you know fragile human you know with, with feelings and and the whole thing is that you're supposed to connect with that and feel what that person's feeling in the painting well, you certainly show that, but also you show that tenderness and that, that recognition of the humanity of the people that you're painting, and indeed perhaps the landscapes that you're painting in a human context too. So, Robert Malherb, thanks very much for sharing your exhibition with us. Thank you very much, Richard. Great to see you again. <laughs>